Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome back to Blood Witch History LA. Another shorter chapter. Sorry, but this is the way this story is working. This is chapter 37, Laws of Oceans. Here we go. Tell me, how is it that you know where my brother is? Standing on the deck of her ship, Gunnel asked Pan as they were leaving the harbor of his secret isolated home. It is the same way that I knew of your arrival and had informants pass along information that would guide you to me. I have not been idle as one would think a person would be while in hiding. Your brother and I have established a web of contacts and trusted people who send and receive information for us. We have connections on every Polk Island and several of the surrounding clan islands. It is an easy thing to do when your king becomes influenced by advice that is obviously meant to send our pasts forward into ruin. Pan was proud of his secret messenger web that he had helped create. His words rang out with that pride. I thought we had gotten lucky in searching for your island home. I suppose that luck has more of the making than of the finding. Indeed, great aunt. Now that you know of my secret spy web, should you not trust me with why you have come back to your home here in the islands? I doubt it was just for your father's sake, inquired Pan. No, it was entirely selfish at first. But since things are so complicated here, my presence has taken on multiple obligations. I will tell you everything when we find my brother, but I do suspect that you have divined most of what has brought me here. For obvious disdain for even speaking of them, Pan spit out, Braxton. Not quite. If it were only Braxton, I might have just stayed in Ag. But there are things happening, distinctive and characteristic of deviant plans. Something in the world is at work, intent on disrupting the balance of Ag, Polk, Brine, and Dundruff. All are in commotion, Gunnel said thoughtfully. This does sound complicated. I will spare you having to repeat these things once we reach your brother. I can be patient. Gunnel then turned to Pan with an unrelated question. When I confronted you back at your home, would you really have submitted to castration? You didn't hesitate. I saw no fear in your eyes at all. Pan looked out to the open sea off the port bow, wasting no time with his answer, for he knew this question would come sooner or later. If I had looked shocked, it would have shown a lack of foresight in me. If I had objected, it could have been taken as fear or guilt. Submission could only demonstrate my sincerity and drop the burden of trust upon your shoulders. It worked as I had hoped, but if you had pursued on with the punishment, I certainly would have held on to the very last second, then fought back. No one will handle my stones except whatever woman will have me as a husband. Gunnel looked out to the same horizon as Pan, leaning on the railing. Good man. A trait few have, that kind of foresight. She then saw something off in the distance. Is that a ship headed our way? I noticed it a few minutes ago. It is tacking an intercept course. Maybe it will catch us within an hour, perhaps less. Are you expecting anyone? Gunnel asked, then turned to hail the ship's pilot. There are no agendas to meeting anyone. Although there is no reason to be alarmed either. We will have to wait and see who it is. Gunnel smiled at Pan with some admiration. You've gained a lot of emotional strength. A few years ago I would have thought this calm in you would have been very much improbable. It is good to see it. You would have made a good husband for Ellie. So I was right. There will be no wedding for us. Do not rush to any conclusion just yet, Pan. There are a lot of things in motion. To be quick with a judgment now, 
promises to be dangerous. Patience, in spite of urgency's need, is of very high value today. Tomorrow will bring a new sun, new insight, and a new playing field for all of the pieces to our current puzzle. The pilot came to the port bow with Gunnel and Pan as requested. Gunnel then pointed out to the approaching ship what flags are aloft. A moment of investigation through the scope, the pilot discovered who the ship belonged to. It flies the red and blue of the Locust Clan. Curious, though. It also has a yellow flag. Were we expecting them? Before Gunnel could answer, Pan replied, Yes, drop sail. Let them draw up. He then regarded Gunnel. For assurances, you might want to put your men on alert. I expect this to be a good visit, especially since pirates and raider clans would not know to fly the yellow flag. But there have been a few rare times when coincidence and fate danced to an evil tune. With an impressed look on her face for the wise actions that Pan was taking, Gunnel went and ordered her men and the ship's crew to stand ready for combat. The hour proved to be without the need for any hostilities. The Corsair was longer, taller, and faster than Gunnel's ship. Its crew would certainly be double that of hers and could have been a serious threat, but no alarm was needed. The ships ran alongside with grace and calm. They came as friends to Pan. Walking across the gangplank that held stable between the two ships now lashed together, a very odd islander man wearing a big smile and a scar drawn from his left ear to under his chin. Pan recognized him immediately. Navon! Are those a high guard? I've heard of these guys. What are they doing with you? You're just a shite of an adjacent. How did they end up here? Pan pointed to Guttle, who was still standing at the bow of the ship with her queen's armor and the Troder colors. Oh, shite. <laughs> Do I bow? Or are the rumors true? Navon gave a silly bow, as any gesture would do towards the queen. Gunnel only responded by putting her arms akimbo. You do remember that you are facing several high guard of ag. I would highly recommend that you behave yourself. If the rumors are not true, the queen is liable to give your face another long scar. If the rumors are true, her high guard might just remove your tongue and a few fingers to help you remember your place. Right. Navon smiled and gave a proper bow to Gunnel. So, I got a message that you're going to Prince Blaine. Are we ready to move now? Ready to move on what? Finding the question unnerving from Navon, Gunnel interjected into the conversation. With an almost boisterous tone, Navon spoke up. This fool hasn't told you? Told me what? Be specific, she demanded. Your father is protecting ships from Claxton. They move about our oceans freely. It seems our king, your dear father, has made an alliance with those dogs. He has even let them raid some of our lesser clans. I do not care who you are, princess of Polk or queen of Ag. I will speak my disgust at the actions of our king, any monarch who would allow such dishonor. Your father insults us. Navon spoke boldly. He then added, Feel free to punish or kill me for my words, but I will not recall them. I speak aright. Gunnel stormed up to Pan and grabbed him by the shoulder, squeezing it in anger. Is this true? Why didn't you tell me? Great aunt, it is like your secret, only to be spoken about at the right time and the right place. When we meet with your brother, he should have more details than I or Navon have. 
Let it suffice to know that your father seems to be working against the greater good of Polk and all of the islands. It seems that our king believed all that was spoken to him by the seer. For those things to have made him turn against his own people must have been enough to scare him into dishonor. Navon added with boldness, There has not been a single man, woman, or child that I have spoken to that finds the actions of the king as agreeable. If he is not dealt with soon, the people will have his head on a stick. This little shite of a nephew of yours has it in his head that we should replace the king with your brother as soon as we can. I agree. Call it treason. But I will not allow any southerners to even breathe the air we sail through, regardless of the king's commands. That is my father you speak of. Are you that bold? Gunnell was beginning to tire of being angry so often. I am, Navon showed his courage by leaning in towards Gunnell for emphasis. Return to your ship. Let's make best speed to Meridane and find my brother. End of chapter 37